In my last video, I went over the entire history of my account after playing Genshin for an entire year. Today, I'm going into detail on the 20 characters I've built up in Abyss Ready. That means for support characters, having them at least at level 70 with 5 ascensions and level 6 talents, and for main DPS, at least level 80 with max ascensions, level 8 talents, and a level 90 weapon. I'm also going to go over my favorite teams, including some wackier off-meta ones, cause look, I love my melts and my vape teams as much as the next guy, but once you've seen one of them, you've seen them all, you know? We'll start by going over a team and why I use them, why I love them, and then the individual characters and all of their equipment. So this team right here, the Tax Evaders, Yoimiya, Benny, Singcho, and Fischl is my number one favorite team to play as right now because Yoimiya currently is my favorite character to play as like a main on-field DPS. This fourth slot is a flex. I do replace Fischl with Kazuha or Zhang, Jean, Sucrose, but generally speaking, this is the most fun I have in the game currently because Yoimiya's insanely fast hit speed combined with Singcho's Rain Swords plus Fischl's auto-attacking Oz synchronization when she at uh, C6. All of that combined, it makes me feel like I'm playing with a fantasy Gatling gun. <laughs> it is just so rapid fire. And then especially with all these recent combat events that we've had, there have been so many buffs that you can pick and select from that increase your attack speed even further. And it's by huge insane amounts too, right? Like 20% or so per stack that just makes this Yoimiya team such an absolute delight to play as. My Yoimiya currently is sitting at a 77-156 ratio, which hey, basically a perfect golden one one to ratio, not a super high crit damage, but hey, I'll gladly take the uh, the pretty consistent crit rate, right? I do have a Thundering Pulse for her. I'm a whale, but I'm not a Leviathan, so I only have refinement rank one, but it's still, it's such a huge, huge upgrade. My artifact set, I'm rocking a two-piece Crimson, two-piece Shimanawa. I know that Crimson Witch four-piece is the best in slot for her, uh, even if it's just kind of marginal, but man, I have had the worst luck with Crimson. I do want a two-piece just for that, you know, pyro damage bonus up. Uh, this isn't like a terrible piece, right? At least I have two crit rolls and some attack percent, some energy recharge, a little bit of elemental mastery. So these are all great substats. It's just, I like a little more crit damage. I'd like to get some crit rate all up in there too. Uh, <sighs> this is terrible. Look at, look at this. Defense, oh yuck. At the very least, I have some actually really decent Shimanawa pieces. So thankfully Shimanawa can kind of swoop in. You know, we have five, yeah, five uh, crit rolls here, plus some energy recharge, which is very nice. Don't love the defense percent, but it's whatever. Uh, I have literally zero great pyro cups. <laughs> this is the best one I have with uh, <laughs> two crit rate rolls. God. Like look at that, none of them are amazing. I only have one other cup that has crit rate on it and it's still only 6%, man. And 19 defense percent. Oh, it's it's so painful. I hate it. Oh, I hate it. And I have three different Shimanawa crit rates with crit damage substats on them, which is very nice. I don't have any crit damage main stat Shimanawa pieces, which is unfortunate, but hey, at least this one has two crit damage rolls. So there's definitely a lot of room for improvement, but man, she shreds everything she comes into contact with. So I can't complain too much. I do have C2 with Yoimiya. Uh, I, I don't think either of these are very necessary for her at all, but I think combined, it's like a 10% increase, a 12% increase. I'm sure the Yoimiya mains discord would have like a clear, concise answer on that, but it's nice to have, not necessary. And bro, I messed up. I tried recording this previously and I used my very first crown ever, but I wasn't actually recording the footage when I did it. Hey, post me here just saying I actually found where the footage was. I thought it was lost, but we have found it and it is recovered. And I'm so happy because I actually have the moment I used my very first crown in the game. Am I really ready for this next step of our relationship? Are we really going to do this before marriage? Oh, okay, I'm going to do it. <sighs> but no main DPS can go very far in this game without a certain six star Pyro Archon. His name, of course, being Benny. Uh, my Benny, full disclosure, uh, is terrible. <laughs> he is unfortunately a victim of my very terrible early game artifact farming where I only prioritized artifact main stats. And even then I didn't really pick optimal stuff. And I just haven't been bothered to go back and farm the noblesse domain to get him like proper stuff. So you'll see here, 1570 for my crit ratio. <laughs> I do at least have 226 energy recharge, which I think is a really comfy number to have for Benny. Realistically, you really only need like 200% for him and you can be just fine, especially if your rotations are really good. Maybe even like 180 if you're using him with another pyro DPS, like I currently am. But I think 220 is nice. It's just, you know, it gives you a little bit more leeway. You have to think a little less and he just gets burst back off cooldown, off rip. So 
I really like him for that. I do have a Favonia for him. I have a whole horror story about how this uh, took place. Uh, the previous video that I made, if you haven't seen it, highly encourage it, especially because of what transpired for me to get this Favonia. But hey, I have it. It's a huge upgrade and I'm very thankful for that. Artifacts, I'm not even gonna bother showing them in like big detail. They're all copium. This feather's actually kind of nice, right? I have three crit damage rolls and uh, three energy recharge rolls. So very nice for Benny specifically. Although, hey, if that was crit rate, maybe that'd be a little bit better. Um, well, Jesus. Oh, yuck. Ah, oh, the pirate. Oh, oh, God. Oh. And here's what I mean. This is one of the first artifacts I got from him. I was like, oh, that Benny's a healer. He can use healing bonus percent, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I feel so bad. Of course, I have C5 Benny. I'm not planning on C6ing him, you psychopaths, okay? What I do kind of want to do is I have a European alt, and if I ever do get C6 on that, I would actually activate the C6 just to mix things up and, like, play around with all the unique properties that it gives. But I'm not going to ruin my main, at least not until they uh, put in a toggle, so... Time being is what it is. One, six, and nine for talents. I am going to uh, crown this eventually, but I'm holding off until I crown my other main DPS talents first. So like child melee and child burst, Ayaka burst, that kind of stuff before I do my support talents. We have our six star Pyro Archon. Now it's time for our six star Hydro Archon. Look at this man. I feel bad. I still haven't ascended him because I've just been putting off fighting Oceanid. <laughs> like I can melt Oceanid like it's nobody's business, but the PTSD of doing it early game still haunts me and I just don't want to do it right now. I've been procrastinating by building Shao instead. <laughs> my current ratio, uh, 51, 152, so not too shabby, and 211 energy recharge. On God, I think if you have C6 Singjo, which I do, and if you have Sack Sword, I think 200 on the nose is more than enough to uh, always get his burst back off cooldown. Having a little extra never hurt nobody, all right? There's that C5 Sack Sword. Couldn't play Singjo without him. I mean, I technically could, but I couldn't imagine doing it without Sack Sword. I have a lot of pretty decent emblem pieces. Uh, I think this emblem flower is literally the best flower I have on my account, right? We got energy recharge, crit rate, two elemental mastery pulls, which isn't amazing. You know, I would maybe prefer if that was one uh, crit rate roll, but man, oh, that 36.5% crit damage. That is actually the highest amount of crit damage I have out of any of my flowers. And the second highest I have is my other emblem flower. So uh, really decent pieces, all things considered. Feather also pretty decent, right? Don't love that flat HP, but still some uh, decent uh, crit rate rolls. We have a leftover attack percent piece. I used to use two piece Heart of Death, two piece Noblesse and Oblige. Obviously, I think Emblem is just such a huge step up. So now I just kind of give him whatever straggler attack percent sands I have lying around. Uh, this one, I think, is one of my better attack percent sands. So uh, I think it's definitely fitting that he's the one who rocks it. Not an amazing Hydro Goblet, but it's an Emblem Goblet, which frees up, you know, free space for like a better overall artifact piece. So that's why I use it. So like a lot, hey, 20% crit damage is not anything to sneeze at and a kind of middling crit rate piece, but we do have two rolls and energy recharge. C6 with him. C6 is such a game changer with him. Love it to pieces. I mean, you don't need it. I had C5 for like six months. It took me so long to get my last con, but man, oh, once I got it, oh, spicy meatball. Talents, 177. I do, I need to get these to eight eventually. It'll happen. I'm just lazy. Fischl, I love to pieces. The official was actually the first four star that I started using. Again, if you uh, watch the other video, you'll know my insane luck with pulling five stars in the very first week of playing the game. Fischl, I got a lot of cons from uh, Venti's banner, and so I used her a lot. Uh, although I haven't leveled her up past 70, at some point I would like to ascend her. I mean, you ascend her and you just get like free attack percent, so might as well, right? But overall, two different builds for her. Uh, this one, I have 47, 139, and uh, that is with a four piece Thunder Soother set. I think this is definitely better suited for electro charge teams where you're constantly having like 100% uptime on the bonus effect. With this team, with these four goons, you do proc electro charge, but you're also proccing a lot of vaporizes and overloads, so it's not as consistent, and so you do kind of miss out on a little bit of that. And so when she's with these three goons, oh, uh, but I should say actually, so when I have this uh, Thunder Soother set, I do put Viridescent Hunt on her because honestly, these Thunder Soother artifacts are copium. Again, this is one of the very first sets I ever farmed for. I really didn't do a good job of prioritizing what I needed to, but I guess the job done, right? Even though they're pretty copium, like it's not the worst set in the world. Uh, but let me grab that Thundering Fury real quick. So with Thundering Fury, my ratio takes a little bit of a hit. It goes down to 75, 99. Uh, so more consistent crits, but they're doing a little less damage. But I think it's offset because I am using the, uh, the Stringless, right? So we get a lot of uh, bonus Elemental Mastery and also skill buffing, which does affect Oz's damage. 
on top of a 128% uh, increase to uh, overload and electro charge, which is what she's going to be procking constantly with this team. My uh, Thundering Fury sets overall, not too shabby. Uh, I like this feather. Not a great attack. Sands uh, could definitely use some big improvement on that front. Actually, a really amazing electro cup, right? Seven crit rolls in total, or maybe six. Actually, I think that's probably six, but a little crit rate, a little, little crit damage on the crit rate. Not amazing, but gets the job done. Talent levels, we have one, eight, one. <laughs> Eventually, I, I probably should level up her burst at least to like six or so. I'm just kind of lazy when it comes to leveling up talent levels for units that are off field. I'll get around to it eventually. That's one of my big goals this year is I just want to catch everybody up on their talent levels, but uh, now is not the time for it, so I'm not going to. All right, and that's the first team in four characters down. Although, again, I actually do a couple different variations with both Zhang and Kazuha and Sucrose and Jean, but really Zhang and Kazuha are the two mainstays. Days, so let's go over their stuff real quick. All right, so right now I have like an experimental sub DPS build on Kazwa. Normally I just run like full blown elemental mastery battery stuff on him, but because I have a C2 and because every time I burst, I get 200 elemental mastery both on him and the entire team for free anyway, I've been playing around with like rocking less of it and then actually focusing on crit rate and crit damage. And uh, the result actually is I've been having a lot of fun with it. Like a lot of fun with it. Uh, I did get Jade Cutter, so that's been a huge upgrade for him. Uh, although I could could also rock Miss Splitter. Miss Splitter is also really amazing on sub DPS Kazwa. Honestly, I just like Jade Cutter because I just feel like color palette wise, it just fits so well with them. <laughs> the green with this red and black is oh. Hey, Christmas is coming up, right? I gotta celebrate. My sub DPS Kazwa artifacts are as follows: big crit damage, little bit of elemental mastery, big elemental mastery on the feather. Really love how many rolls I got on this bad boy. Kind of wish that it was the same case for all of these. Beer doesn't venerate pieces, but I ain't got luck like that, man. Uh, an energy recharge sands with two crits and two attacks. Literally insane. I think this is the best energy recharge sand I have on my account. It's a shame that it's part of the Vera Descent set where most of my anima boys don't really need this. Uh, although Gene actually benefits a lot from it. Normally, actually, I, I just put a uh, this elemental mastery on Kazuha, but I've also just been again toning down the elemental mastery, focusing more on like comfy play and man turns out Kazuo with a lot of energy recharge is really fun <laughs> animal damage bonus purely just because it's part of the viridescent set so i can free up a free slot for a better artifact piece uh, if i wanted to go like animo for the pure uh, sub dps uh, i have this really nice animo damage bonus two crits and uh, energy recharge and flat attack pretty decent animo piece but again i am just using this viridescent one so i can have a different slot that's opened up and uh in Kazuo's case i'm using this wanderers piece with nine crit rate uh overall it's such a fun build it isn't as optimal as going full LML Mastery, even though Kazuo's personal damage skyrockets with a build like this. The rest of the team's damage isn't quite as impressive when you're not focusing on him being the battery. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to switch stuff over to his big LML Mastery build, and I'll show that off real quick. All right, so the three pieces that I swapped over are the Sands, so I'm using this one. Uh, I do like that it has some uh, energy recharge on it. Uh, this Elemental Mastery Viridescent piece. Again, hey, some energy recharge. Hate all of this nonsense, but this is nice, at least. And then, of course, a Elemental Mastery uh, off piece. Uh, I could use this one as a little bit of crit damage, I guess, but I'm not really focusing too much on that. Swirl can't crit anyway, so, you know, if you're going full LML Mastery, you're focusing more on Swirl than, like, the initial hit of attacks, and in that case, crit's basically useless, so uh, I'd much rather have an LML Mastery main set piece that also has at least a little bit of energy recharge, and for some reason, just an insane amount of attack percent. <laughs> completely unnecessary. So grand total, along with equipping him with Iron Sting, is 943 Elemental Mastery. So, uh, huge, huge increase, 512 Swirl Damage, plus uh, you get the the addition of his 200 Elemental Mastery from his burst from C2. This is definitely the build that I use whenever I'm doing like nuke stuff or uh, even like when I can't do anything in just like one rotation. I feel like this contributes more to overall party damage over time than, uh, than going his sub DPS one. But for like running around the world and doing bosses or still even doing abyss runs, I mean, the other sub DPS build is still a lot of fun and uh, I'm probably going to be using that more just because it's something a little different, makes Kazuo feel like cool. It's a really nice feeling to hit like 18K on his uh, on his hold E. I'm not used to that, I'm used to like 6K, right? Town levels, seven, eight, eight. Pretty standard stuff, I again, I need to get this to eight. I'm such a lazy bum, dude. I'm such a lazy bum, but uh, there's so much farming when you have so many characters and I don't do refreshes, so uh, what can you do? What can you do? Next up, we have Geo Daddy. Oh, uh, I should also say, 
Uh, the Kazuma. three characters I have at level 90 are Yoimiya, Kazuha, got him to 90 because uh, swirl damage does scale with character level, so he does benefit from getting to 90. The increase is still pretty marginal, but it's a little bit more than like what a regular DPS character would get from their attack stat leveling up. So I have him at 90 and I have Zhang at 90 because he actually got, I think, like an additional 2,500 max HP. Here is my Zhang. I can either go 45 to 32, and that is uh, when I give him Staff of Homa, or if I give him Jade Spia, just whatever I'm in the mood for. Uh, I can go 67, 168. Personally, I'm more of a gambling man myself. So if I can at least get around 50, then I say all cards in. Let's just crank up that crit damage as high as it can go. <laughs> uh, that said, I love how flexible Zhang is. Literally any of these four Andes all are amazing. Uh, I've actually been using the catch on him a decent amount because I've been doing this team with Xiao, Rosaria, Zhang and Raiden to farm their friendship levels. <laughs> Even him with the catch is a blast, but I did just now get Staff of Homa. I'm so close to getting it to 90 and I get that extra crit damage point, but I literally, I, I have no ores. I'm at such a deficit. It's so painful. I hate this war of attrition, uh, but as is, he's so good, man. We're rocking the four piece Millith set. So uh, I do like it a lot for his E. I kind of have him in this weird place where he's in between being a burst support and like a shield utility kind of boy. But like with the current build, he hits for like uh, 110K on his burst when it crits. So uh, here are the artifacts. Pretty copium, like only three crit rolls on this. Not amazing. Uh, I do have an HP percent Millith piece and it, you know, it's HP percent and it has fly HP and a crit rate. So I could potentially roll this into something nice, but I'm lazy. And like this attack percent also comes with 9% HP. So it's kosher. Plus, hey, hey, I just got Homa. All right. I just got an additional like 3000 max HP from that staff alone. So I'm fine. I think his shield, even with an attack percent sans, is still way more than durable for my needs. Uh, his circlet is arguably the best circlet I have on this account. Five crit rate rolls and then a single energy recharge roll. This thing is so close to being as juiced out as it can get. I love this thing to pieces. Anytime Zhang isn't part of a team and I can uh, put it like an offset piece in the circlet, I'm usually passing this bad boy around because it is so juicy. I did get a free C1. I got a double pull when I was pulling on his banner, which was very nice. Uh, it's just nice to have two of these steals out, especially for Yoimiya, when you can have both of these procking her burst, just kind of, you know, and plus when you have the uh, tenacity of Millith set, just, you know, makes the uptime on it even more consistent than it already is. Talent levels, 6, 8, 8. There's no reason for this to be at level 6. I don't know what I was thinking, but I did it. I guess if I really wanted to go, like, physical Zhongli, I could do that at some point. Not that I'm planning to. Okay, so that was team number one down. Next up, my second favorite team, especially when I'm running around the world, uh, and even in Abyss, any Abyss floor where it has, like, a bunch of uh, regular mob enemies, this Electro Charge team is some of the most fun I have in this entire game. It is so good. Child, Kazuha, Beidou, Official. Kazuma slot is uh, replaceable and also so is uh, one of these goons. I can replace one of them with Raiden and I do that occasionally. Uh, I can replace uh, Kazuma with Benny, Sing Cho, Jean, Venti. It's a very flexible team. Uh, this current configuration is my favorite because it's the most aggro and it, I feel like it plays the most like a quick swap team. <laughs> that said, it's also a glass cannon team because the literal only Damage mitigation in this entire configuration is Beto's burst, and that's it. So I usually have to pop hash rounds when I'm using this out in the world, but I think it's more than worth it. It's so much fun. Child is my second favorite character to play as as an on-field uh, main DPS. So right now I have met 64, 177. Basically no energy recharge on this uh, current setup, which isn't amazing because I do have him on a four-piece Shimanawas, but it still kind of works out. I love this four-piece Shimanawa in combination with Thundering Pulse because when you use Child's range burst, he on automatically gets 15 energy refunded to him, which you can then immediately spend to get the huge 50% normal charged attack buff from Shimanawas. So he has really good synergy with both Thundering Pulse and Shimanawas, which can't be said for Yoimiya, uh, who gets her rotation completely messed up if you have both of them on. So uh, for that reason, I use Shimanawas. Heart of Depth is his best in slot. However, I really don't have a great Heart of Depth set. This is probably the best Heart of Depth piece I have, uh, and that's kind of my leftover uh, like off set piece. Uh, so these are the artifacts. Uh, I have a lot of really good Shimanawa pieces. Again, my subsets are way better. So for that reason, for me specifically, the Shim Shimanawa set is way more optimal than Heart of Death. We have a uh, 10, 20 crit rate, crit damage. This is probably one of my better feathers. This is an okay 
Shimana ones. Uh, I could use this one instead, which also gives a little bit more crit damage, but for child specifically, I think it's better to have a little more crit rate because when I use Thundering Pulse, at least, it's uh, not super high up there. 67 isn't really amazing. I feel like I'd be a lot happier if I could get his crit up to like 80 or so. I do like this uh, Shimanawa piece, even though I didn't get any crit damage rolls, which sucks. It's got a lot of attack on it. And uh, I'm hyped because, okay, if you watched the previous video, I said I wasn't gonna roll on Polar Star, but then I was like, oh man, even though I have a Refinement 5 Rust that I just swap between these two whenever I'm like, swapping between their teams. Man, would it be so nice if I could just have Polar Star so I could, I could just swap between these two instead, or I could just have it like dedicated so I could just permanently have Polar Star on Child and then have Thundering Pulse permanently on your mail. Wouldn't that just be quaint? <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm so bad with weapon banners, man. I can't stop. I can't resist. And the problem is I haven't been slapped on the wrist yet. I haven't failed the, the rolls that I've wanted yet for Polar Star or Homa. So I'm like still fueling my terrible addiction to weapon banners. So once I get Homa caught up, I am going to level up Polar Star. And then I'm sure this child build is going to change a lot because I'll be able to focus on a uh, crit damage piece and uh, do some fun stuff. Once I get Polar Star leveled up, I'll probably equip this single Shimanawa feather that I have, which, you know, isn't terrible. And then just give child uh, probably like this Millith circlet. What if I just do that right now? What does he look like when I give him Zhang's circlet instead? 5223 is pretty cool, but when so much of his damage really is reliant on him critting consistently. I do think that, uh, or at least, you know, when you're playing melee child, if you're doing his nuke build, then, you know, forgo all crit rate, just go all crit damage, pray for a dice roll. All right, time being though, yeah, okay, now I understand why I <laughs> had him set up like this. I do have C1, got, again, super lucky with a double pull, so very unnecessary con, uh, especially if you play him as like a pretty consistent hot swap character and you don't stand him for too long. The cooldown on his E really is not a big deal. And last but not least, the big talent levels. So I have him at 699 and of course I love that passive talent that boosts up the level of everybody's normal attacks by one and there you have it my number two favorite character to play as and my number one to look at <laughs> Beto! Beto got her to level 80. Would like to ascend her at some point, but honestly not a huge priority because I'm using her mostly as a burst support slash anytime I have damage incoming on this team specifically that doesn't have any defense. I'll swap to her, counter it, and then go back to the other goons, which is such a fun way to play this game. Man, living on the edge, not being carried by a Zhang shield or like Benny's invincible healing gating, <laughs> having to rely on actually parrying stuff. Such a fun way to play this game. I love it to pieces. 68, 161, 205 energy recharge, which low key is overkill because I do always pair her with Fischl, but hey, Let's me get her burst super easily, so I ain't complaining. I do pair her with a Serpent Spine. Currently, I'm trying to get Refinement rank 5, so next two months I am going to be picking the Serpent Spine to max that out. Also kind of mitigates her kind of low attack, only 1176 with my Emblem set. We make up for it with a Serpent Spine buff. Four piece Emblem set, you already know that I have some pretty goaded Emblem pieces. Instead of using this insane 36 crit damage one, uh, I use this one that has 10 crit rate instead and 21 energy recharge. Really great synergy, again with that four piece combo. Just another pretty decent feather. Uh, energy recharge sands. I don't have an attack percent emblem sands with both crit rolls on, which is pretty unfortunate, but hey, maybe one of these days, right? For the time being, this is totally serv serviceable, gets the job done. I kind of go back and forth between using this electro damage goblet, which is definitely my like best one. With this one, uh, I kind of swap it in between Beto and Fischl. If Fischl's by herself, I'll give her this one. If the two of them are together, I'll give Beto this one because I think her burst does out damage Oz by a pretty good bit. I, d I don't have any great crit emblem pieces. This one is okay because it has attack percent and then energy recharge, but no crit right is what it is though. We still get there. C6 with Beto. Let's go. And then what's that? Uh, five, seven, eight on her talents. Probably not going to touch them. I'm pretty happy with where they are. As long as I have eight on her burst, everything else is just kind of flavor text. So like I was saying, sometimes I do replace Raiden with Beto or Fischl. She has amazing synergy with Child uh, and also with Yoi Mia, surprisingly. So sometimes I'll swap her on and uh, when I do, she rocking not an amazing ratio, like 55, 152, right? It's like serviceable. It's not a golden one to two, but gets the job done. 292 energy recharge, which I think is a pretty decent amount. Hard carried, mind you, by engulfing lightning, but uh, 
uh, it gets the job done. Most of the artifacts are basically what I put on Beto, with the exception of having an attack percent goblet as opposed to an electro damage one. You just get a little bit more bang for your buck because Raiden's passive gives her so much electro damage bonus as is. It's 0.4% uh, of her energy recharge, which kind of gives her so much that you get more returns from giving her attack percent on the goblet than electro damage. Uh, because of this, because I have a pretty decent attack percent goblet with the emblem set that gives me an off piece somewhere else. And so, like most boys, if I have an off piece slot, I give her Zhang circlet, or if I'm using Zhang in addition to her on the same team, I will give her this crit damage wanderer's piece. Still gets the job done, right? I do have C2. I splurged a lot of those. Anniversary double primo top up bonus boys on getting this C2. But hey, it's a huge upgrade. This makes her super beefy, so I ain't complaining. Talent levels, two, eight, nine. I think eventually I will crown her burst. That being them, I'm fine with it being nine. I don't use her a ton. I For someone that I splurged for a C2 on, I feel like I don't use Raiden enough, especially in Abyss. I haven't really used her at all, really. I mean, look, I'm just having way too much fun with Yoi Mia and Child. But Raiden still will come. And I will say, man, I love it when everything lines up and you get those juicy burst crits. Oh, God. That's some satisfying stuff right there. This is my bonafide permafreeze team. Aika, Mona, Venti, and Diona. When you have Ganyu as part of these two, what's it called? Morgana. So what would this be? Ayana. My Ayana team. I personally just really don't enjoy using Ganyu. I just feel like the charge attack spam is so boring. I feel like you need C6 with her to have like a fun play style. So when Aika came out, definitely vastly prefer using her over Ganyu. And in my opinion, I know this is a hot take and I know it's like, not really true, but I feel like Aika is the better character between the two of them. For sure, Aika has better single target damage, and I'm gonna hold on to that because I just like her so much more as a character and with her design and with her gameplay that I'm holding on to that validation. <laughs> All right, so my Aika, level 81, 2000 attack, which is pretty reasonable, 31, 250, which is actually the highest crit damage that I have uh, for anybody who's using like a full artifact set. My Shao does have a higher crit damage, but I have him on a rainbow set right now, so he doesn't have any you know, artifact set bonuses. This this 31 250 is a little deceiving. Obviously, I have Cryo Resonance with Diona, so uh, bumps it up to 46. On top of 30% crit from uh, Four Piece Blizzard Trayer. Again, this is a Permafreeze team, so in total, this is actually an 86 to 49. I do have Miss Splitter. Honestly, of all the weapon banners that I pulled on, this is probably the single one that, that I benefited the most from. It's like best in slot with her, with Kaching, debatably like Benny, even Singcho, if you have more energy recharge. I mean, this is such a monster of a weapon. So uh, it makes a huge difference having that much crit damage plus you know, all this elemental damage bonus. Uh, her artifacts are pretty decent. You know, with Blizzard Trayer, it's a lot easier to pull for it because you're really just looking for crit damage. Only need a little smidgen, little sprinkling of crit rate. Not that this stopped this feather from getting three crit rate pulls. So, hey, I'll take it. I feel like the sands are probably the weakest here. No crit damage rolls at all. So this is definitely the area that I have the most to improve on. Uh, well, actually, no, the cryo goblet is also an area that I need to uh, get a better one of. I just don't really have that many great cryo goblets. This is the best one I have. This is the one that I have with the most crit damage on it. And then I do have a, an, an actual crit damage uh, blizzard circlet with a little bit of energy recharge, which is great for Aika, so uh, I'm reasonably happy with that. Would have liked some more rolls into energy recharge, not elemental mastery, but hey, is what it is. I do have C1 with Aika because God, literally like all the other C1 Andes I have, I either got it as part of a double pull or I got it like 10 or 20 pulls immediately after I got the first one. So, uh, hey, I'm not complaining. You know, it lets me use her E like two seconds sooner than normal. Her E does a lot of damage, so I'm cool with that. Her talents are at eight, seven, nine. I am gonna crown this bad boy. At some point, oh god, I actually have enough to do it. Oh no! Ike is like my second most used character in Abyss. Do I just rip it right here and now? Oh, it's 700,000. Oh, it's such a commitment. Okay, fuck it. Oh, I did it. Oh god. Oh, it feels so weird. Oh, it's such a rare resource that I'm using, but absolutely worth it. I'd do it again. Except maybe not because my poor heart. Oh, my poor more reserves. Oh. Only three and a half million. No. Mona, Mona, Mona. 
very first five star I ever pulled. She's been with me since literally day one. I pulled her on the Noel banner before I even got Kaya and Lisa. Absolutely deplorable ratio. Uh, she is purely just like an omen applier, 27 to 161. It would actually behoove me to fix that and just get like a crit rate circlet on her because right now I'm not using one, but don't care about that too much. Favoni's Codex just for energy recharge. Uh, I do need to get this to 90 at some point, but hey. I am rocking her on a two piece, a blessed two piece hard depth set. It might be better for me to put her on emblem. I don't know. I actually haven't really played around with that on Mona because I just kind of set these on her and then forget about it. I feel bad because even though I've used her so much, I have literally had her on every single Spiral Abyss team since the beginning. I, I, I don't put anything into Mona. Only level 72, talent levels 4, 6, 8. Eventually, I'm going to crown this burst too, but I still have her at 72. I just, man, I don't want to fight Ocean Ed. Eventually, I will, but I don't want to. I have an absolutely insane four cons. This is easily the most amount of cons I have out of all of my five stars. Fourth con of Mona is actually godlike. Oh my god, I forgot to. Right, right, right. So not only am I getting 55% crit rate from Crow Resonance and uh, the four-piece Blizzard Shrayer, but then Mona's fourth con also gives an additional 15% crit rate. And for anyone who doesn't know, if you apply Cryer to an enemy and then you use Mona Burst, your uh, Omen stays on the enemy for as long as they remain frozen, which is you know basically indefinitely if you're doing your rotations and uh, using you know Mona E and stuff right. I'm literally at 30% crit rate. I'm still over critic on Ayaka. <laughs> and you'll love to see it, man. You'll love to see it. All right, good old Venti. Love this boy to pieces. Honestly, Venti's the one character in this game, and it, like especially in the game story, where I feel like as more time goes on and as we learn more and more about the lore, I have come to love and appreciate him more and more. This is my boy right here. So right now, I'm basically using all of Kazuo's artifacts. Uh, they kind of share the same elemental mastery set. Uh, 792 elemental mastery, so not too shabby. Crit rate and crit damage doesn't really matter. 2388. I'm swirling with his burst, so it's whatever. 453 swirl bonus percent is really what what's uh, most important here. Not a size Kazuo because he has that energy recharge uh, secondary stat instead of elemental mastery like the boy, but a 792 I think is still pretty respectable. I do have stringless on him. I need to get this to 90. I guess his uh, 792 will become like an 804. 7 or whatever once I get stringless up to level 90. So it'll happen eventually. Again, Homa, Polar Star, you know the vibes, you know how it is. Again, basically all the same artifacts. Uh, the only difference is instead of using that Heart of Depth Elmel Mastery piece that I use on Kazuo, I have this uh, Wanderer's piece instead, which has crit rate and crit damage on it. Really no reason for me to use this one over the other one, which has some energy recharge and a bunch of attack percent. Literally, I just have this on him because I'm lazy and I don't like having to constantly swap a bunch of artifacts around. Constellation 1 because literally I got a double Venti pull and Diluke in the same 10 pull. So uh, again, another free Constellation, probably the most useless five star first con. Well, actually, I don't know. Diluke's exists, so maybe not. But talent level, actually, I feel bad. I have actually really neglected Venti's damage. He brings so much utility with this clumping and existing as animo and resistance shredding that I don't know. I've never really felt compelled to get his other stuff to eight or nine or even crowned. I probably will get this bad boy crowned eventually, but not a high priority. He gets the job done. He serves his purpose and then some in this Ayana build. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. I hope you have taken off your socks and you removed all articles of clothing, otherwise they will get blown off here into the stratosphere. I hope you're ready for the greatest Iona build you have ever seen. All right, 20K HP, 600 attack, 757 crit, 165 energy recharge, level 50 sack bow. <laughs> Oh, level 18 flower, which granted has a lot of uh, HP percent, which is actually kind of nice. Uh, level zero feather, <laughs> level 20 HP, no bless. Uh, lo level 12 goblet, uh, level 20 healing bonus percent maidens. Uh, this was my corrosion build. Um, I've been too lazy to swap back to her uh, no bless build that I actually use, which you know what? I'm going to do that right now because I was only using this for the corrosion to uh, offset that because without the maiden effect, she actually doesn't really heal that much because <laughs> I've completely neglected her. I use her purely for her uh, shield and for her uh, particle generation for Ayaka. Uh, let me get the Noblesse set on. All right, so her Noblesse set, yeah, look, it's it's just all focused on HP and like throwaway stuff just so she has more base stuff to heal with. I will say this Goblet's actually kind of nutty. I mean, look at all these flat HP rolls, right? Cool. Kind of poggers, dare I say. A lot of HP rolls on the healing bonus circle too, so it's actually like a pretty decent pure heal set. 21k HP for a level 70 character. I 
I really need to get to like level 80. But, but here's the thing, right? I've actually been managing totally fine with only this uh, bonus 20% energy recharge because Sackbo on Diona is so good. I'll get it caught up eventually. It's not high on the list. <laughs> One five, four on her talents. Like I said, the greatest Iona build you have ever seen, bar none. So the Iona build is definitely the most meta and it really is the most damage dealing team I have for like cryo boys. But this team right here is so fun and so slept on. Nobody's been really using Aika and Child together, but man, they are missing out. It is so much fun to apply the wet with these two goons, right? Because they can just do it constantly between the two of them. Swapping over to Diona and Aika, getting her burst up, bursting with Aika, and then swapping over to Child to just go ham and melee stance while Aika's burst is going down. It is so fun. It just fills the screen with so many numbers. And I mean, it's a super, super potent, super or uh, perma freeze combo. Uh, alternatively, I don't need Sing Cho. Like, Child still applies enough hydro uh, on his own as is. You can just do like one range burst and then you're just set, right? So. Alternatively, I'll swap out Sing Cho with Kazua, right? I'll, I'll range burst with Child, I'll apply Hydro, I'll uh, burst with Kazua so that his burst is the thing that's like continuously applying Hydro and also, you know, resistance shredding for the boy. I'll freeze, burst with Ayaka, then go into melee stance with Child, and oh my god. This is my second favorite team right here. It is such a blast. And then a very close third is the uh, Electro Charge team with Beto, Fischl, and Raiden. Now, in the other anniversary video, I said that I really wanted to build up Xiao next and I stayed true to my word because I recorded and I was editing that all over the past week. So over the past week, I have built up Xiao. I've got him pretty much caught up exactly to where I want him to be. And dude, I've been having so much fun with him. Got him to level 80, fully ascended. Probably going to be one of the boys that I get to level 90. It's a toss up between these two, which one I get to 90 next. All right. So Xiao is a little bit of a UD case because he is one of the only dudes who doesn't really benefit from artifact bonus sets. Like they're nice on him, but really not that necessary for him to still do amazing damage because his scalings are so so monstrously high. So uh, he's kind of a fun treat because every time I, uh, I'm i like playing with other teams and stuff and then I come over to Xiao, I can kind of just build a bear whatever artifacts are available that I just feel like playing around with. So like right now with Homa and his current artifacts, I have his ratio at 61.9, kind of nice, 255, right? <laughs> it's still 133 energy recharge. If I want to have more consistent crits with him, I can just swap over to Jade Spear and then John gets uh, Homa too, which is you know pretty huge. And then he still has 84, 192. Although, man, I just think it's way more satisfying with Xiao, especially to see those huge crits go down. But there's a lot of flexibility here, right? Like if I want to, I'm I'm using this, you know, the super goaded crit damage flower here. Um, I could instead swap it out with you know, like maybe this 1020. Maybe I could just give him uh, this sands instead. And I think I dropped a little bit of attack because I lost uh, some attack substats, but now I'm at 72, 234, right? Like he's so Build-A-Bear, he is so flexible, but then I lose a little bit of energy recharge. So there's like so many different ways I can go about like, giving him different artifacts just to see what that perfect sweet spot is. And I've been having so much fun trying to find that perfect balance, especially with my other supporting goons. Uh, I really like having Sucrose as his animo battery, especially Sucrose when I give her the, uh, Favonius Codex. That just funnels so many particles over Chow. Uh, I really love that combo to pieces. If I do give him Zhang Circlet, it goes up to 79, 234, right? Although I do like using Zhang with him, so I kind of miss out on the middle of the set, so I typically don't do that, but if I just really want to pump Xiao up as much as I humanly can, that's on the table. But anyway, you get the point. Eventually, I do want to have a two-piece, uh, Viridescent two-piece Shimanawa or two-piece Glad that can achieve something similar to the ratio that I currently have now. Uh, but for the time being, man, as a rainbow set, it's still so much fun. And pl I mean, look, I get 15% extra electro damage bonus, so I mean, I'm still sitting pretty well, obviously. I uh, don't have any cons on him, unfortunately. Uh, right now, talents 868. Eight. Uh, I am working on getting enough books. I do want to get this up to eight. One of the few boys, I'll just have eights across the board for once. So that will be nice. Oh, hey, I can actually do that right there. As is though, man, I, ugh, Xiao is so fun. I actually think he's really quickly climbing the ranks as favorite playable character. All right, big Sucrose. I feel so bad, dude. I built up Sucrose quite literally just two weeks before Kazuo was announced. I had like gotten her to 70. I had put a decent amount to her talents, got her, you know, on six and six, got her cons and everything all sorted out. And then immediately Kazuo was announced and kind of power crept and invalidated Sucrose in a lot of ways. So 
especially when I got his C2. Like, that just <laughs> took away all of Sucrose's utility. I still love her to pieces, though, and hey, especially as an Animo battery, I feel like she is unrivaled if we ignore Venti. Don't worry, Sucrose, Suc Sucrose, don't listen to me. You're very cute. You're lovely. I probably don't even have to go over the artifacts. It's literally the exact same LML Mastery build I've had on Venti and Kazuba. Only difference is uh, when I have her as animal battery with Xiao, I use Favoni's Codex for additional uh, energy recharge and particles. When I'm not, I have her on Ma Mapamare, Mapamare, however you pronounce that. Uh, dude, I'm so dumb. I thought that Sack Fragments was an energy recharge book, just like all the other Sack weapons are. No, it's elemental mastery, it gives you more base elemental mastery and that's just like a better thing to have for Sucrose. I didn't know about it, and so I built up Map of Mare when I was building Sucrose. So again, eventually I'm gonna get my Stringless to level 90. I'm gonna get my Sack Fragments to level 90. Ah, uh, I just, I don't have any ores, man. Uh. Zyx has that team where he does like Sucrose's taser build, where he uh, he has her as like the main on-field DPS. And I think uh, having either Lost Prayer or Skyward Atlas for uh, like a taser build, on-field Sucrose build, would be so much fun. But uh, it's another five star that I need ores for, and I don't have those ores. As is them. Again, yeah, I'm not going to go over our artifacts. It's roughly the same amount that Venti gets, uh, a little bit less. I think hers is, yeah, it's like 730 because Map Mera has 50 less uh, Elmo Mastery than stringless does so it's like 740 730 elmo mastery on sucrose definitely gets the job done already went over talents and uh that is that and last but not least we have the acting grandmaster gene so uh gene is actually uh, alongside xiao i've kind of built them both up at like roughly the same time most recent character i quite literally just got friendship 10 with her like a couple days ago and then i actually literally just today got friendship 10 with raiden so that was kind of hype her build right now is <laughs> kind of overkill on the crit not gonna lie don't really need this much crit on her, but hey, I got it, right? So might as well flaunt it. I just kind of have her as like, you know, it's Jean, like burst support. She heals plenty enough on her burst, even with like a pretty low attack stat, all things considered. These are the boys that I have. You see most of the Viridescent set. Uh, I have her on a sub DPS set instead of like all uh, Elmel Mastery. Uh, I could put her on that and uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I don't know. It's just whatever I'm in the mood for, you know, sometimes, sometimes you want your anima boys to be more than just Elmel Mastery goons. Sometimes you want more for them out of this world. Want them to to embrace their sub DPS roots. Uh, but I could, if I really wanted to, just swap around. You know, give her the crazy elemental mastery feather that I have there. Again, eventually, hey, it'd be cool to get um like one viridescent piece each that has that 80 elemental mastery to like really juice up my animal boys. But hey, 78 161 is nothing to sneeze at. It's honestly, I mean, that's the golden ratio right there. And so I think it's technically more optimal, but either way, hey, 170 energy recharge more than enough to get her burst back anytime I so desire it, especially if I'm using her with another animo like you know, Xiao. Xiao is the only other animo that I really ever use her with. I used her a lot with Raiden because uh, yeah, I was leveling up both her companion uh, levels at the same time. And that's a really fun team. Jade Cutter is my go-to for Jean. I honestly think out of all my characters, I feel like Jean is probably the one that benefits the most from Jade Cutter just because that attack bonus based on her HP goes hand in hand with her burst scaling off of her attack. Man, no gene cons, unfortunately. I would give so much to get Gene C2 though. One of these days, man, I hope I get blessed in the same way that I got blessed with Monocons, because that Gene C2 is mm, tasty. 168, I think I'll eventually get uh, Gale Blade up to eight. It's so fun. I think it's honestly like top three moves in this game. Just <laughs> the amount of stuff you can do with it, the amount of shenanigans you can do with like tossing enemies off cliffs and into deep water. Man, you can like Elisa burst and then Sith choke hold the enemies using Gale Blade into the burst to give them like big Sith lightning, man. Oh, I love all the animos. Honestly, animo is my favorite element because there's not a stinker in the group. All of them, even like animo traveler to an extent is so much fun to play as. But there you have it. Those are all of my main builds. Now, there, I have four other characters that are technically built up, but I never use them. So I'm gonna like super speedily go through their stuff and uh, you can pause the video if you uh, want to just like look at their stats and stuff. Uh, it's D Luke, Kaching, Shangling, and Ganyu. D Luke was my very first character that I mained. Um, I will always have a huge place in my heart for him. I love him to pieces, both in the story and even from the gameplay perspective. I've just used him so much. I used him religiously for like my first eight months of playing 
this game. Uh, so I got my fill of him. He's been power crept by Yoimiya, and uh, Yoimiya's been my big, like, breath of fresh air. So he's shelved for now. Ganyu, I just don't enjoy your playstyle. Char Chot Spam is not really my thing. If I had C6, I'd have a lot more fun with her, but I'm a whale. I'm not a Leviathan. I will never spend that much for a single character. All right. I'd rather have, like, a little bit of everyone than, like, one insanely topped up character that I'll get bored with after a couple months of using them anyway. So, Kaching, similar boat as Diluc. I used her a ton in the beginning of the game, and I still love her. I still think she has one of the most unique playstyles, dude, especially with all the stuff you can do with like Lightning Stiletto. Still blows my mind that you can pop a Rune Guard's weak point just by aiming the stiletto up in the air to hit their eye. Like, that's so cool to me, right? I love her to pieces. I just haven't really used her a whole lot because I've been so focused on Raiden and Beto and Fischl as my like go to Electro Goons, but other. Uh, there will probably come a time, especially now that I have Miss Splitter, where I'll go back to Kaching and uh, I'll use her. Shangling and Fischl were the two four stars that I, I actually used a pretty decent amount in my beginning stretches of the game because I got Diluc, Mona, Venti, and Kaching super early on, like literally within the first week of me playing the game. Uh, they were the ones that I mostly used going through, but occasionally I would supplement it with Shangling and Fischl. Shangling kind of fell off the wayside. Uh, I mean, I know she's super meta. I know that she's insanely busted and I mean, hey, look, I went through the entire higher ordeal of getting a refinement five catch for her. So uh, between that and having a really good emblem set waiting for her, I know I could get a lot of really good juicy stuff going with her. I just haven't really felt that inclined to uh, give her a whirl. You know, why use national team when I can revolutionize the game with my electro charge goons? And there you have it. One year of building characters and the results are basically that I'm a jack of a couple trades and master of none. But hey, you know what? I would rather take 20 end game ready boys who aren't really min maxed at all, but give me so much variety for my day to day playing of Genshin rather than having eight hyper focused min max characters that I would just get bored with if I play them every day for a couple months. I have ADHD brain and these 20 characters are my Adderall. <laughs> This year, I do want to focus a little bit more on catching everybody up, uh, again, especially with their talent levels. I mean, that was basically the entire video was just be saying, oh man, I should probably get this to level 8 at some point, huh? So that's a big goal. And I do still want to build a couple more boys. Eula is super high up on the list, especially now that I have Raiden. I think that's going to be so much fun to incorporate Eula and start seeing those huge nuke numbers. And dude, Ito looks so good. I really really, really want to build him up too, and then hey, maybe Albedo so I can get the true Geo Supremacy. We'll see though. For the time being, this was a huge video, so if you watched the whole thing, or at least most of it, hey, thanks a ton. Hitting the like button and even subscribing to the channel does a lot to help me out. Comment down below, who are your favorite characters to play as, what are your favorite teams to use, and either way, thanks again for watching, see you for the next one.